Well, hello, welcome to Double Talk. I'm Mark Steffen. I'm Michael Mandel. And yes, you can light up with the Negroni Spagliato. Is that how you spell it? That's how you spell it. SB. There's not too many words that start that way. It's certainly not American words. That must be Italian. And so is Negroni. Ah. And Negroni, well, Duvernay is French, but uh, yes. we use Campari. That's anyway, right. if Mark would say it, those of you who watch the show know that one of our favorite drinks is the Negroni. Well, we yes. talk about it a lot. Michael is the is the mainstay I'm trying to advocate the Negroni. for Negroni. Yes. On the other hand, somebody, Don Leslie as a matter of fact, uh, suggested that I make cocktails, design cocktails, for a, uh, a bubbly cocktail party in a wine club. Mm. So one of the most common ones is what, you would say, for bubbly, for Prosecco, let's say. Prosecco. And, and Aperol, an Aperol spritz. Great drink, you put sure. a little soda. That's a little simple. So for you guys. We've done that, haven't we? We've done that, I think we've yes. Done that. We might have done this too. Uh, not maybe quite this. Not. No, I don't think so. But, but so this drink, Believe it or not, I made it at a party at the Henderson's house, the people from the newspaper. How's, how was Harry? Harry Henderson? Not as good as Larry. Oh, okay. Um, and the reason is, is because you want to make Negronis because people love the combination of sweet vermouth and Campari. I mean, that's a worldwide Who thing. Who doesn't? Everybody loves that. Um, but if you mix it with gin to get a Negroni, you're mixing it with gin. So what I started to do at the party was mix it with Prosecco, because people are drinking Prosecco, and you know, that gets a little boring after a while, because it's basically bubbly. It's wine. Yeah, wine. So, to give it a little bit of a zitz, a little hit. Zitz? Zitz. Give it a zitz in there. Some, or a zetz. Some zhuzh. A zetz. Oh, I'll, I'll save this until we get uh, all tanked up on this. So, I'm using, the way you make a Negroni is an ounce of a Campari and an ounce of sweet vermouth. And then all you do is fill it up with the other stuff that you have, which is what we'll do. And what we found with our travels to the local taverns, many bars in town don't carry Campari. Yes, five in <coughs> fact do carry Campari. At least five that we know of. And most of them you have to tell how to make a Negroni. Um, but that's easy once you have the necessary ingredients, Campari. You, you, Mike, now you have said that the uh, Negroni is the most popular cocktail in America. No. You have not said that? I said something like that based on uh, a highly unreliable website. Um, <laughs> no, you didn't say that. I don't know what the website you was. You said that. And when I went back to look, because I'm thinking, uh, they said Negroni is the second most popular drink in the world. The second most popular. And the more, after the martini? No, it was not that. And that's what the old fashioned. Me, yes. That's what made me doubt it. The old fashioned. When I say that to some people, well, see, I. You say, of I doubt the old fashioned is even true. I agree. And that's why I, I can no longer make that claim. Okay. Except by giving that caveat. But for the Negroni to allegedly be that popular, at least in the top three or so, it's, that so many bartenders don't even so know many, how to make it. Many don't. And many here don't know Most how to make don't. it. Many taught, don't know how the many words. taught to make it in bars? Every bar you go Every to. Every bar I go to. You had to teach him how to make it. Joe, first one he was, which he couldn't do at uh, at the Palacio because he didn't have didn't any have of the greens. They didn't have sweet vermouth. Well, they had gin. They did have gin. <laughs> so then uh, you meet him at Sunset Girl, and sure then, enough. Well, we did a TV show when we did this. So this is Prosecco. It's La Marca Prosecco. I was just talking to a sales rep from Comcast at the pool store, and when I mentioned Prosecco, she'd say, you like La Marca? I said, yeah, it's okay. You get um, that at the Walgreens, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. It's right there. Did they card you? Yeah, they did. They're carding everybody. They carded me. I don't need the harassment, really. But I, it's, it's a festival looking drink. Do you stir it? Uh, do you no, stir the, it? no, the uh, Prosecco usually does the, the job the for you. Is. Let's sip it and then see if it needs. Well, you'll see what it I still got a good head on it. Well, There's nothing like good. good head. Yeah. You've mentioned that before. <laughs> but you usually wiggle your eyebrows. It's still the you same. Would, yeah. Does it need more? Uh, no, it really doesn't. Mine's higher there. Okay. Okay. Well, it looks festive. This is a festive drink for the holidays. Good holiday drink. Probably could use stirring. I think so, because you taste the uh, Prosecco. Prosecco, right yes. And but as you else. drink it, it's going to get uh, better. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's good to have it when you go out to eat in a restaurant. It's good to have go to a place when they have drinks. Even if it's just beer and wine license, that's good. And uh, sure. unfortunately, I mean mixers. 
Oh, okay. That's a common thing in Italy. That's how they do it? Usually with their fingers. Mm. It's Italy. They then they lick it off and they do it here. Yes. <clears throat> How's it now? It's good. So, you know, um, a couple of weeks ago in the Pulse, mm. they did a nice uh, review of a restaurant, mm. a write-up of the restaurant called Casa Amaya. A Those nice, of you who live here have never heard of it, obviously. A nice large Mexican restaurant in the building that used to house the Gadsden Birches on Avenida de Mesilla. Across from... Uh, right across from Luna Rosa, Luna Rosa Wineries and right behind the Comfort Inn. And um, You've never seen it because the sign is hidden by Comfort Inn. Well, they don't, I don't think they have a sign. No. But the, the building's hidden by the, by the motel, unless you get past the motel. Anyway, they were only open a month or so, and they're already out of business, I hate to say. Well, you saw it in the, this is the October 15th edition, and it shows great pictures of Mexican food over Mark's face. Yeah. And um, looks good. Never got a chance to go there. One of the reasons I never went there is it was a family restaurant. No drinks. Yes, it's not a couple's restaurant, it's a family's restaurant. And they have, they have a nice large bar in there. Oh, it was a great place when it was it gas was. and purchase. And uh, the problem with the place is they didn't advertise. Nobody knew they were there. They didn't have a sign out where you could see it. Um, plus, plus the, all the construction on Valley Drive and Avenida de Mesilla, I'm sure it didn't help. Yet, hundreds of cars a day pass so right in front of it on their way to Mesilla. People go, everybody's going to restaurants in Mesilla. To the six or eight restaurants in Mesilla. And you could turn off easily because it's on the right. It's right there. It's right there. In fact, we went in. They were already outloading the furniture, and I walked in, and I talked. You, you did this earlier this week, right? Yes, this week. So went they, were, they were they were pulling out. You went to lunch at a place that didn't have beer? How is that possible? I want to try the place out. Well, but I usually let a place stay open at least a month before I go there, make sure they get their act together. Who did the review? Oh, good old Sylvia Quintanilla. Quintanilla. And I talked she to She does all the reviews. Uh, this one, she was a little late on. Because well, people didn't act on it. They'd only been open a month, so she went in there, and a month later, they're out of business. And also, unless something is, like, incredibly surprising about your Mexican food, what's going to drag people? You know, paisano, which is... That's Spanish food. Yes, and that's... But it's a variation on people who like Mexican food. Yes. Mole. Mole is uh, Three kinds Mexican. of mole. Yeah. And they do a very nice job. They're, and actually they're they a cut have above a, most they Mexican are. restaurants. And they do have a good uh, wine list. They do have a nice wine list. They also have tapas. They have their own tapas bar. Mm. The only one in town. So. So yeah. So we went in for lunch. They, they were they were out of business. So we went on and had lunch at La Posta. <laughs> you, you can always be sure. You know they're not that bad anymore, are they? It wasn't bad. No, they're exactly. okay. They took home leftovers. People didn't like uh, La Posta in the old days because we thought it was a commercial turisto place catering to El Paso turistos. And it, it was, and they've uh, gotten over that problem. They did. They've, they've classed it up. They do a lot of things. Speaking they, from the alcohol point of view, they have single barrel tequilas, their own which is special. Tequila that somebody makes just for them. Yes. And uh, I had a margarita there, which I hadn't had in a long time. Did you do their margarita? Uh, yes. Did you ask for a Cointreau? No. Or I did you go with triple I, I just went with the... Whatever you just pointed at a margarita. Margarita La Posta or something like that. Yeah, that's probably a triple sec. Which is the ch cheapest one. Six fifty. Oh, that's triple sec for sure. Yeah, so, which is fine. I was telling friends of ours, who may be watching, uh, the difference between Cointreau and uh, triple sec, how much better Cointreau is. The other difference is Cointreau is like 47 bucks a bottle. Yes. Yes. And triple sec's what, 13? <laughs> Probably. So if you buy a bottle of Cointreau and a bottle of triple sec, you just spend 60 bucks. Yeah, and then, then you want a tequila. tequila yeah, new a good. Well, you 46 know, bucks for a bottle of tequila. No, actually, I found like Alto is a good tequila, and that's 20 bucks or less. I don't mind Salsa, to tell you the truth. You, really? You, the yeah. Herradour. Oh, Herradour is expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Salsa. Mm -hmm. The last time we did tequila, I didn't bring Salsa because I remember you saying, Oh, Salsa, I never drink that. No, no, no. I never drink Jose Cuervo. That's for tourists. No. I, don't, I got sick on it too many times in college. I can't even stand the smell. That shouldn't matter. I mean, that's It college. does matter. You got sick on college, you got a degree, <coughs> you kept going. <laughs> I just can't have Cuervo, mm. believe me. Really, I can't believe it. It tastes terrible to me, and I can't even smell it. But salsa, no problem. Well, speak about your psychological blips. That's one of them, huh? No, that's the only one. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not. Okay, onward to more blips about, oh, look at that. Now, we're talking, about, we're talking about just alcohol. You know, alcohol. You know, the distillery issue where the uh, 
I want to hear how you're going to attack Businesses. Your, it's always good to hear this. With a beer and wine license are allowed to also sell uh, alcohol uh, distilled, distilled in New Mexico. Right. So you're, it's not that if you have a beer and wine license, people have beer and wine licenses, licenses can get their beer or wine from anywhere usually, right? Yes, they don't have to make their own. Right, we're not talking about distilleries or, or home brewery or, home brewer, or breweries. Brew pubs. Brew pubs in town can also sell things that are made here. Distilled liquors made only in New Mexico. They're allowed to do it without having the full liquor license. But this is only going to happen by the downtown mall. It has to be in certain areas of the town. And the downtown mall is pretty much two places, right? So far, it's uh, the uh, Dragonfly. Dragonfly. And, and the little Toad, Toad Creek, Creek, which so, doesn't have food anyway. Which is a brewery. The other thing that's coming is the city-owned buildings. Yes. And they're allowing their own buildings to have a special license. They have a full liquor license. They bought from a grocery place. They have one full liquor license? Yeah. Are they going to use it for the whole thing? Yeah. It's, so it's, then why would they need this? Uh, as long as it's all under one Why roof. would they need this rule? Why would who need it? The city is doing this so that their so bars can serve all these things. No, their bars are already set. But they're doing it to, to stimulate Who? business downtown. Who? Who else is downtown? Those two places. Also, <clears throat> I think places near downtown are places that haven't opened up yet. For instance, the Thai India place is supposed to be opening up on Church Street soon. All right, but then they still have to buy a liquor license, right? A beer and wine a license. A beer and wine license, but which is way also, cheaper. Yes, then they can sell distilled, distilled liquors made in New Mexico. Now, people who have spent three to four hundred thousand dollars on a liquor license don't want this to happen of course not. because they think it's competition but if you go into a full stock bar they're going to have five times five kinds of tequila they're going to have things you five want. kinds of things you like vodka. not just city things they, they're going to have all things. kinds of things you go into a little distillery here in town they're going to have one kind of scotch one kind of vodka yeah and know. those are right what kind of is, is, that's no uh, competition that's right the dry point distillery has colbegan uh scotch Oh, yeah. Scotch type brand. I see. Colbegan is from Santa Fe Brewer Distillery. Mm -hmm. They also have bought uh, bourbon in uh, bulk. I don't know what that means, but they bought bulk <laughs> bourbon. And it's mm. actually pretty good. They bought, it's not their own yet. I think they have to put it in their own uh, oak for a while to make it decent. But their bourbon is pretty good. Well, now, Marcy Dickerson said, you know, oh, the more places that serve liquor, She's the worse our, DWA, our DWIs will be. Well, was she saying that before she opened her second bar? Well, and she had her third bar, M5, which we used to love. Mm -hmm, that was a great did. bar. But it seems to me, the more the more places that dispense uh, alcohol, the, the less DWIs, because you you're closer to home. You can uh, even walk home. That's not necessarily work. But in real towns, that's how it real works. Towns, real towns are neighborhood This is a bar, you walk to the bar, you have a few and you walk home. You're, you're, talking about, you're, talking, you're talking about Boston, I think. <laughs> Boston, Boston, New York, Boston. San Francisco, Los Angeles. Not Las Cruces. Take your pick, not Las Cruces. All El Paso. El Paso has small communities. There, and there's bars all over town. town. Yeah. Um, you know, you can well, this is why people are starting to want to buy more uh, real estate to live in next to the plaza. Because you could walk to things. Absolutely. And, uh, Especially so, bars. Although, if you really want to drink, you should buy your own stuff. If she doesn't want more bars opening up, uh, that sell New Mexico distilled liquors, how would you feel about somebody buying a full liquor license? That, now that's competition. From her? That's competition. If you can buy one. These, you can buy one, or you can lease one. Oh, yes. You can lease uh, one. She used to lease. Who had... Uh, the warehouse leases. Uh, it, was, it used to be called uh, Hurricane Alley. And didn't she own it at one yes. point? Yes. yes. I mean, that's a, that's a real liquor license. Yeah. And, it's a uh, full liquor license. And if you pay... But if you're paying... Theoretically, three hundred thousand. Once you pay that money, it's gone, right? I mean, you could say I'm amortizing it or I took a loan out. Right. If you're still paying the loan out, you're still paying for it. And why the owner of Pickwick, Andrade? Yeah. Was against this too. He doesn't sell drinks by the alcohol by the drink. He just yeah, sells but that's packaged. A different, that's a different. He thing. buys up liquor licenses from bars. That's so true. So he can sell package. But he this wouldn't good. affect him in any way. Would it affect him? It wouldn't. People who buy from him wouldn't go to a little bar. No, okay. they wouldn't. Okay, we're now, gonna, we're gonna take a break we, and we uh, still have more drink left. We're gonna you talk about holidays. As you drink this, it's very pleasant. It's a good way to spice up your life of prosecco. We'll be right back after these words. Yes. You know, the farther down I drink, the better words. it tastes. Yes, because we're getting more near. <laughs> yeah.
Hi, I'm Cheryl Burke, and I have a confession to make. I have a serious crush on my workout. Hip, fun, and always a challenge. Jazzercise is the total package. It's the only workout that I've ever truly loved. Does it show? That's because I'm in the best shape of my life. What a difference Jazzercise makes. When's the last time your workout swept you off your feet? Find a class near you at jazzercise.com. Celebrate, celebrate, Fiesta Motors. Come and see us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Main, see you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors, where buying a car is always a celebration. Mark Goldstein, the safe money guy, at 575-556-2472, to learn about innovative strategies now available to help you grow, protect, and preserve your money and financial future, regardless of market conditions. We're back. This is Double Talk. I'm Mark Steffen. I'm Michael Mandel, chewing on peanuts and drinking so what is this spagliati. Guy? The Negroni Spagliati. Spagliati. So the word Spagliati means wrong or mistaken. So this is the wrong or mistaken Spagliati. The wrong kind and of And even Negroni. though I was making it on purpose a couple of years ago, and mm. so I make it, the reason it's named that is around the 80s, one book says 1987, a guy at the bar was making a uh, Negroni, and he picked up a bottle of Spumante instead of a bottle of gin and oh. poured it in the drink. Oh. And he gave it to the guy. And the guy's saying, wow, this is pretty good. He says, oh, wait a minute, I forgot. It's supposed to be gin. He says, no, no, I'll take this. It's pretty good. So it is pretty good. Spagliati. It's a wrong Negroni. Well, so it is a good holiday drink. And one thing you have to guard against all the holiday season are thefts from your, from your porch when uh, UPS and FedEx leave boxes and packages there when you're not home. Or if you are home, they still just leave they them there do. and run away. Doesn't your camera pick that up? I don't you have a camera, but... So this is a good way if you like if you don't like to take the trash out, all you have to do is put it in a box, you know, tape it, and put leave it, it there. Set. Maybe somebody will steal it. Somebody steal your garbage. There you go. I haven't had that problem, but a lot of people have. Okay. So there's there's things you can do to keep people from stealing things off your porch when you're not there. Destroy your porch. Oh, uh, you, you, can actually, you can't read without your glasses. Why are you bothering to try? You can schedule deliveries at some of these places. You, you know, know what you do if you have FedEx. Uh, when you find out a FedEx package is coming, go to their website and say, collect at a different location. And, and what I do is I get it. Collect a, at their office. Yes. And uh, the office for me is like four blocks away. Or you can, you can check its progress and, and know yes. what time it's going to get there. Well, that's so not, you can be there. That's not so good. It's best to let the place keep it. <clears throat> Sometimes you get it there quicker. This week, I had a package come on Saturday that was due if it were sent to my house. Yeah. It would have been there Monday, which means you have to sit around all Monday worrying about it, especially when it's a box of wine. Oh, that's how I get my wine. And you just click them and say, take it up at the, uh, the FedEx office. There's enough FedEx offices in town. It shouldn't be a you problem. You go to the one in Kinko's? Yeah. Kinko's on the university? Mm -hmm. You could also ask a neighbor if you have yeah, a trusted neighbor. Yeah, but then the neighbor. neighbor. No, who has a trusted neighbor? Uh, do do well, you? I kind of do. You do? Did, weren't you mad at your neighbor? No. Didn't you have a fight with your neighbor? Didn't you shoot his dog? That was a okay, different was neighbor. Okay, was that a different neighbor? Oh. You have a good one? Well, I missed him. Unfortunately, the dog yeah. got in the way. Oh. So what do you say? Anyway, <laughs> that's pretty much what I say do with your packages. Don't have them delivered to your house. Deliver them to a FedEx place. And UPS, that's a little bit more complicated. But well, they have a place you can go and pick it up there, too but it's on 17th Street. A lot of the places that use UPS, um, 
There's a UPS store here. In Actually, you also go through and stick it in your mailbox anyway if it's small enough. Well, we got a box delivered yesterday. Great big box. Um, From where? It? UPS or post office? Or yeah, what? it was UPS. And mm. so, now. That should be the least of your worries during Christmas. But what are the other worries? More and more, it's going to be happening until Christmas. Now, there's a movement afoot to allow New Mexico voters to register to vote, if you haven't already, the same day as the election. Now, many states have this already. New Mexico is not one of those states. But uh, do you think we should do that? I think we should. Um, I, if you I, have enough time to vet people, do, do you have to vet people? Do you see a license or something? You have to show proper identification to register. Well, that's all, to prove that it's you. I don't know. It depends on the office that does that stuff, if they have enough time, enough manpower to do that. The amount of people who vote the is so little. The county clerk's office. Is yeah, you have to go to the county clerk. But if, those, if you want to get it, the last people in, really, how practical are those people? The ones who say, oh, I forgot to register for a vote. They, could really, just, they, could they can't hear about it. They could do it almost any place. They could. People berate you all the time. Yeah, they could have just moved here and now they got to the New Mexico residency. Before, the day before. No, they may have been waiting for the New Mexico residency to kick in. <clears throat> And, you know, if, if this does take place, if they allow voters to register the same day as the election, there will be people set up all over the place, probably even outside the polling booth, to register you. You know, that will happen. Actually, that might be good. Could happen, you know, anywhere. So I, I'm, I'm for anything that's going to get more people to vote, or at least register to vote, I'm all for it. Good for you. And we can bring the migrants over and let them register, because, you know, they all, they're all doing it. And we could do like what, remember we used to do? You'd go to the bar. Pay a guy five bucks, buy him a drink, say, come with me. And then you go to the... Here's register. how you vote. Oh, yeah. That's that, how that, that was back in the day. I remember the days when New Mexico bars were closed on Election Day until the polls closed. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's New Mexico. No, no. That was a lot of places around a the lot world, of places around, the country. around America. Yeah. Fortunately, that's not the case anymore. We, people buy their own booze and just sit at home and they get drunk and they don't go vote. They, that's so true. So go vote. Don't just sit around drinking spagliottis. So what else? Uh, now, you know, our utility rates are going up. That is for water. Not, the, the city of Las Cruces is raising the water rates. You know, they said two dollars and twenty-five cents a month. The big, the big thing that is going to cause uh, trouble in the world is the fact that we don't have enough water. As well and as we're in we all know where we are. We're in a drought. We're, we're in the desert. We so, had a terrible uh, snowpack this year. If you don't want your rates to go up, I would say move to Flint, Michigan. <laughs> they have fortified water. That's true. You know, they're, uh, they can get all the unleaded gas they want, but, they, but, they but they're getting leaded, leaded water. water. Yeah. So that makes your exhaust a lot smellier if <laughs> you have leaded water. Did you know that? Yeah, so it's going you up. Try that. It's going up $2.25 uh, this month. But you could sign up to vote against it. It's going to be going up again at $1.78. It's going to keep going up. You can vote against it by getting people in the city council to fight against uh, well, the city is the one who charges it's us It's the water. city water, right. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's going to go up for three years in a row. Did they just put new meters in your house? They just put new meters in my house and all over the place. Those um, new meters probably cost so much, our rates have to go up, but it's going to make getting the meters read so much cheaper. Well, uh, are these smart meters? Yes. Like are they electric? Well, we didn't have city water until this year. We were on a different water system until this year. The city bought out the water system that we had. We now have city water. Hey, good for you. We do. Now you don't have to go to a restaurant to drink water. Well, do you want water before your meal? Oh, that's what I came for. Yeah. Well, you know, we didn't have fire hydrants in the neighborhood. We now have one. <laughs> they put, one, they, they put they, one in. They put the dirt back? Finally, yes. They did. Oh, that city. So when are you going to become incorporated in the city then? So that you will pay city taxes and contribute to my taxes which are so high. Well, we also don't have sidewalks or, or uh, street lights. Isn't that why you live there? Yes. Okay. We don't want the but city want water. No, we, we water. had water. Oh, but it wasn't good water. We don't need city water. It's the same water. Now you have water that's $2 uh, gonna be a month Never going to be overcharged. More. For the next three years, it's going to go up, up, and up. Yes. So those of you who don't like it, go move someplace else. Now, the Onate Marching Band. The what? The Onate High School Marching Band. I thought you said Band. something about the Nazi. They're a very good band. Yes. In fact, they won a big award. They came in first place. And uh, I happen to know one of the top horn players in the band, Stephen, Stephen Rakowski. You would. Uh, congratulations. Is he one of your relatives? No, but I know him. I know him and his father. Okay. 
Yeah. That's over. Now, the NMSC Art Gallery is having a big uh, uh, exhibit this Saturday, today, 1 o'clock. They're doing a, an Aikido performance. You know Aikido, the it's martial, martial arts. martial art, yes. That's right. And, it's uh, also an art. I mean, it's called an art. Yes, because a the, martial art. Like my yoga. People have commented my yoga is totally artistic because it certainly isn't helpful. That's true, and totally self-indulgent. Yes. And so anyway, they're going to be putting on an Aikido performance at 1 o'clock at the University Art Gallery on University Avenue. Sounds and, like fun. And then at 2 o'clock, there'll be a discussion. Now, about your Aikido. Yes. Now, it's not about dogs. That's an Aikido. That's, so the that's next true. thing is a blood drive. They've been having a blood drive uh, every day. If you're online and you've ever given to the blood company. It used to be called United Blood Services. Services right. Now it's Changing. called a leader or something. So that's coming up next Friday. Next Friday uh, at uh, the County Building on Motel Boulevard from 8.30 to 12. You, well, you, give blood, you, you can always go to the other building across from Sam's Club and donate blood and you get wherever you go they give you cookies and yeah. You know, this is blood drive, a special blood drive. Is they're going always doing a blood drive. Well, it's not at like the county building. Thing. So what? Well, now is when <laughs> they're doing it. How many people live or work around the county building? Well, I don't. Well, I don't live up near Sam's Club. Yes, you do. I don't. You I live, live near the county building. Right closer, yeah. Oh, that's not much closer. Now, Why don't you do your own blood drive. Now there's a Christmas tree lighting this weekend, Saturday night, six o'clock. That's for that's the Christmas. Night. That's for the Christmas tree. The lighting of the Christmas tree. And tomorrow night there is the lighting of the menorah, menorah because actually Downtown. that is the first evening of Hanukkah. All Jewish Festival. holidays begin on the day before the festival of the, light, the eve, because God said, "Let there be dark and let there be light." Now Mary Look Poppins, up, Mary Poppins open is open this week. Uh, this weekend, Mary Poppins downtown at the Las Cruces Community Theater. Yes. Uh, uh, one of the Berkson kids is going to be in that, as long as you're dropping names. And we're They're very cute. I uh, mean, Mary Poppins should be very cute. And the play at the university, the Christmas holiday place, is still going on called Inspecting Carol. And I have seen that. Uh, it's kind of has something to do with the Christmas Carol in some way. You've seen it. I haven't seen it. I won't see it. After you what I said. It. After what yes. you said. <laughs> so. so that's your weekend update from uh, Mark and Michael Catch us on YouTube for all the eight years of shows. Yes. I'm going to have my accidental Negroni now. Yeah, accidental. Yeah, we're on Facebook. Are we on Facebook? You put us on Facebook. Are we? Some way or another. Somehow. I, yes. See us and see you later. Have a good holiday and stay safe to make it to next year. We'll see you here next Saturday. This ain't bad. <laughs>